Hey guys and welcome to the show. My name is JP and I'm here to help you make your very next game. So today we're going to be taking a look at GameX Studio 2 and I'm going to show you how you can create homing missiles. Now before we jump into some code, let's check out a demo of what we'll be creating today. So this is a preview of what we're going to be creating. We have our UFOs dancing about with character, we have a silo at the bottom and we can select them at will. And if we hit spacebar while one is selected, a rocket goes out to try to destroy it. I'm not telling this rocket what to do when it does um, end up attaching to the target, but that doesn't really matter. I can select as many of these as I want and send out a rocket independently to track its intended target. Very cool, and if I hit the spacebar enough times, we should get an awesome pattern of missiles being attracted to different targets. How cool is that? Okay, so let's jump straight to the code. I can show you how to do this. Cool, so here we are within the project so far. It's just a skeleton. I mean, it has some sprites, has some blank objects. Let's go through them right now. We've got a missile, super, super duper pixelated, which is fine. It's really small, so that's why it's lost a lot of its quality. We've got a part of a silo, so that's the front part, and then we've got like the, the top and the inside. It gives it a bit of depth. And we've got my awesome UFO flying saucer. And lastly, we have the selector. So when we click on one of these saucer objects, it's going to show, whoopsie it's going to show the selector around and that selector is going to move depending on which one of these guys is selected. And in our scripts I've got this little wiggle script that I created which is just going to give our UFOs a little bit of personality like they're kind of hovering, wiggling about there in the air. And um, if we go to our objects we've got the missile, the silo part 1, part 2 and the saucer. In our rooms we have these four layers. Background, well, nothing. We've got the silo part one and the silo part two separated by the instances layer. Now the sources and the missiles are gonna be created on the instances layer, which will, you know, put them behind this long part of the silo, but in front of the back part. So it'll appear like it's coming out of this tube. So first things first, let's go to the saucer. Let's add a create event. Let me get rid of the game world, give us more space. Here I'm going to say uh, speed equals negative 5, so it's going to be moving to the left. Next I'm going to say selected equals false, so every instance of the saucer is not going to be selected. And then I've got this boolean called wiggle left, um, it's going to set to true over there. And that's pretty much everything we need in the create. Next event is going to be the step, this is going to handle the wrapping. We use move wrap to do that. I used to use all the drag and drop for these kind of repetitive, um, simple or simplistic uh, kind of features such as rap. And then uh, I remember a while back when I was going into Gaming Studio 2, uh, obviously you can't mix drag and drop with the, with the code, uh, so I had to look up some of these functions. But the drag and drop would call this move wrap, which is horizontal, true, uh, vertical, false, because I'm not going to be moving vertical, so it doesn't matter. And the the margin is going to be the sprite width, uh, just like that. And then I'm also going to tell it to use script wiggle, which will then make it wiggle left and right. Next thing, um, a draw event. If it's selected, let's draw that selector of it. So first, let's draw self. Okay, so we don't lose the source image when we select it. And then here I'm going to say if selected. Well then, draw sprite, uh, we don't have to extend this at all, just SBR selector, there we go. And um, zero sub image at X and Y of the saucer, perfect. These are all centered, so it's quite straightforward there. And we've got an add event, let's say left pressed, where we mouse, left pressed, if we click one of these, it's gonna say, well, with every other saucer, let's say, uh, selected equals false. So those ones aren't selected anymore. And this one actually is, so select equals true. So that's a bit of a deselect over there, and then I select only this instance. Very good. Okay, so that's actually done. That's very straightforward stuff. Create itself, start moving, you know, tell it which side to wiggle on, make sure it's not selected, step event, you know, wrap the screen, wiggle about, draw yourself, and if you're selected, draw the selected too. And when we left press control whether I'm selected or not. Good stuff. Let's go to the missile next. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Because I've got a bit of a silo here, 
um, if we look at that image, it's quite long. It's about the length of a missile. Now, I don't want this missile to start coming out of the side of the silo because, I mean, there's nothing really preventing it from doing that as soon as it locks onto a target. So if the target is off to the left and comes out the silo, it's going to kind of go through the wall, which is going to look horrifying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say there's like an activation time with, um, with this missile. So it shoots out maybe a half a second later, then it says, okay, I'm active. I can go and hunt down my target. So in the create event, I'm going to say alarm zero. We're going to using alarms, which is straightforward. Equals room speed times, let's say half a second. So half a second is going to do something. Homing equals false. So that's like the active. Am I homing or not? Um, if it's not homing, it's just going to head into the sky in the direction of the silo, which is 90 degrees. So it's just going to be going up at some sort of acceleration. Then I've got something called R speed. Now, we want to keep this kind of looking a little bit realistic. So when we turn to face, you know, the object, we want to make sure that it doesn't jaggedly turn left and right and rotate instantly. It's got to kind of rotate towards at a slowness of speed. There's going to be a smooth rotation going on there. And that's going to be controlled by this rotation speed of four. Now let's go ahead and create that alarm, alarm zero. And this is simply going to say, well, homing equals true. After half a second, homing is now true, and then in the step event, we can tell it what to do if homing is true. So step, add a step. Speed, well, let's say we want to uh, accelerate. So we can take the min of speed plus, it's gonna be maybe a 0 0.5 every step. Oopsie, that's supposed to be plus. Maximum being uh, 10. If I just scroll down, you can maybe see these. They're x1, x2, x3 etc so it's going to take what its current speed is plus an increment of 0.5 and it's going to keep grabbing the min of that until it gets to the max speed of 10 and then it's just going to ignore this min and then speed will equal 10 now if we're homing so we've got a target and we're homing in on that target i'm going to say var point direction equals point direction yeah you got it point direction i want to point the x and y of the missile at the target X and target Y. Now, if you don't know what target in this case is at this time, it doesn't matter. I haven't set what the target is. So that's okay that this is magical right now. Image angle equals, oh, sorry, image angle plus equals, there's gonna be the sign, a bit of math coming on here, degrees to radians. We're gonna take the point direction, you know, minus the current image angle. I'm gonna times that by our wonderful our speed that'll give us a smooth rotation and then because it's got a speed if we update its direction it'll then head in that way whoopsie direction equals image angle which has been calculated over there pretty good stuff now for the uh, nice to have let's go and draw uh, draw self excellent and uh, I'm gonna say draw line Let's do color from X, Y to, let's say target.x and target.y. Uh, let's make it C red and C red. Perfect, that's gonna be this nice little laser line um, to the target. So you can, you know, we can visualize it tracking it, which is really cool. Okay, cool, so that's all done. Next, the silo part one, the big piece of the silo is gonna be our guy that's gonna control uh, the key presses for the actual creation of the missile. I'm not using silo part two, that's just kind of uh, an object that's gonna be used for the depth. Silo part one, it's going to have a target. All right, so here we go, a target is coming into existence, but it's gonna be undefined. Now, this is not the target for every missile. This is the target for the next missile to fire. Say add event, I'm going to say step, and in here, I'm going to cycle through all the sources and find out one that's selected. And the one that's selected is going to be the target, so we can update that target variable in our create. So if selected, now we need to be careful with scoping in this width and not get confused with it. But if the sourcer is selected, I need to use the prefix other. Other is going to be the silo part one. Uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, you might be familiar with scoping in a with statement. So in this case, anything with the other dot prefix is going to be something that's not in this scope. So it lies outside of the scope, in this case, in the create event of 
the silo part one object. So other dot target equals ID. Now because this ID doesn't have the other prefix, other dot prefix, it actually refers to the selected object source or an instance of object source that is selected. So that's quite cool over there. So now that I actually have a reference to the target, I can say add event, key pressed, spacebar for action. If target is not equal to undefined, I'm going to put a little undefined check there just in case the user presses spacebar for selecting a source to shoot down. Var i equals instance uh, create, and we use layer. I'm going to put it at the origin of the silo. The layer is called instances. If we go to our game, well, that's the one that's sandwiched between the silo pieces. And next, I want to create an instance of object missile. Okay, so I, in this sense, is a reference to the identifier of uh, this newly created instance. And I can actually use I dot to give this newly created instance uh, variables at, at this time of creation. So I dot image angle, I'm going to set to the image angle of the silo, straightforward. I dot direction is going to equal I dot image angle. Okay, so it's going to be pointing upward 90 degrees. I dot target is now going to equal the target of the silo part one, which was worked out in the step event. Simple as that. So we could uh, spam space and these newly created missiles will fly towards their target, but only the target that was set when they were created. If I click a different UFO while spamming spacebar, they'll get to a point where the target will be updated and all new missiles will then go to the new target, etc. And they'll keep following the target until we tell them not to. So in this tutorial, I'm not actually going to go into destroying the UFOs, destroying the missiles. It's not really the point of this video. This is just how we can get a missile to follow a very specific target until destruction. Now before we hit play, I'm just going to revisit the game world just to show you what I've done here. I've placed these UFOs in the instances layer over there. I've got this top part of the silo in silo part 2, so it's at the top, if I'm going to get it, you'll see it disappears, and silo part 1 is that top bit over there to give it a bit of depth in the background. All the missiles will be created in the instances layer as seen by this line of code over here. Very good. Alright, so let's hit uh, the play button and see what happens. There we go, we are now running the game. We have the UFOs wiggling about ever so slightly, give them a bit of character. And at the bottom we have our silo. Now if I click on one of these guys, boom, check that out. Each little guy has a selector on it. And if I press spacebar, boom, we have a rocket heading out to destroy him. And that rocket will pursue him until we tell him not to. Now let's select each one of these. Let's give each one of them a rocket. And some of them got two. Check that out. And if we notice, when it's shot out, only half a second later, does it become active and it seeks down its target. Now, this is quite interesting, the patterns they are creating as they go for their intended target. If we want their turn circle to be a little sharper, we can just change that R speed to a larger number. So that about wraps up this video. If you have any ideas on how we can expand it, please let me know in the comments. In the description, you'll find a link to the project files as well as some other useful resources. And if you want to support this channel, please check out my Patreon. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.